Hey guys, this is Mr. C. Aleman from Reinforce My Faith, Mr. Cologne, going over today's gospel reading, and today it's from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 32 to 45, um, the famous for the ransom of many passage. So let's get started. All right. And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them, and they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid, and taking the twelve and talking to the twelve again, he began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and spit upon him and scourge him and kill him, and after three days he will rise. And it continues from there, but the commentary on these brief passages talks about how this is the third final prediction of his passion and resurrection and it is most detailed out of the three found in mark's gospel and it talks about a conspiracy of jewish and roman authorities all right continuing on with verse 35 the request of james and john and the james and john the sons of Zebedee, came forward to jesus and said to him teacher or rabbi we want you to do this for us whatever we ask of you and he said to them what do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. You are able to drink a chalice that I drink. Are you able to drink a chalice that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The chalice that I drink, you will drink. And the, with the baptism, with which I am baptized, you will be baptized, but to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is those whom it has been prepared. And then the ten heard it, and they began to be indignant at James and John, and uh, Jesus called to them, them to him and said, You know that those who are supposed to rule over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them, but it shall not be so among you but whoever you would be great among you must be your servant and whoever must be first among you will be a slave to all for the son of man also came not to be served but to serve and to give his life for the ransom of many word of the lord and here we have a brief commentary it talks about the drink the chalice a reference to jesus forthcoming suffering the old testament uses this image to depict the misery that god compels the unfaithful to drink Although Jesus is innocent and pure, he consumes the cup that it was filled for sinners. With, bap with the baptism, the symbolic for immersion in trial and suffering, James and John will share in Jesus' cup and baptism as they encounter persecution in the early church. The New Testament recounts the martyrdom of James in Acts 12.2 and the exile of John in Revelation 1.9. Continuing with the commentary for verses 42 to 45. The ambitions voiced by James and John led that Jesus clarify the true nature of the Christian leadership, a type of servant leadership. His disciples are not to imitate the pomp and tyranny of the Gentile rulers, but the humility and service that he has been modeling for them during his ministry. For many, for the ransom of many, the expression is used idiomatically to mean for all. It indicates that Jesus will die not for not just for some, but to the, for the sins of the entire world. Here and elsewhere, Jesus interprets his passions as the fulfillment of the Isaiah prophecy about the suffering servant pouring out his life. For many recalls how the Messianic servant will, be, will make many righteous and remit the sins of many by bearing their afflictions. And lastly, we have a word commentary on the notion of ransom found in Mark 10.45. A redemption price paid for the release of captives. The word occurs only t two times in the New Testament, in Matthew and in Mark, but it is related to other biblical concepts with similar meaning. In the Old Testament, kinship relations gave rise to the obligation of protecting one's parents, brothers, sisters, and cousins. Family members thus took responsibility for paying the ransom price for other family members who were taken captive or sold into slavery. As a divine father, God became the redeemer of Israel, who ransomed his beloved son from Egypt. In the New Testament, God purchased his people from slavery and sin by the price of Christ's own life. His saving death does ransom us for freedom and fellowship in the family of God. And we take these lessons about that Christ gave his life as a ransom from not to, not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. 
as we think of our health, wealth, and success and our relationships, we put this all into perspective and use Jesus Christ as our model and to be a type of servant leadership, not in a cringe way, but in a way that we put other people first, but we also have a type of authority and type of responsibility for that as well. So we are made to know, love, and serve God in this world and to be happy with him in the next. Thank you guys so much. Subscribe and like to my channel. Um, be part of the newsletter and also our book club and our growing community. Thank you so much. This has been Mr. C from Reinforce My Faith. Uh, take care. God bless and seek the true, the good, and the beautiful.